uh, I will open the public uh, hearing. Uh, we could probably forego the um, the uh, Pledge of Allegiance and just get into the um, agenda number one, which is the Board of Commissioners to discuss capital projects with Underwood engineers. Okay, I just want to clarify, oh, yeah. um, Don, that the, not a, you're opening the public session, not a public hearing, right? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. The public session <laughs> is open. <laughs> All right, Keith, you want to get into it? You've got uh, five or four or five ESRs that we want to cover. Yeah, I'll run through them real quick. And Peter's with me in case you guys, uh, if you want us to field some questions. And these were prepared for your last board meeting, uh, which was canceled. Uh, but they were for action for authorization to advance the work at Wells 2, Wells 7 and 8, uh, Wells 4 and 5, and then several of some system-wide evaluations um, that, that we've talked about over the last several months. Uh, so there's, there's four separate work order authorizations that are in front of you, so you have the ability to act on them individually. I'm sorry, um, Keith. Can we hang, can you hang on one second? Because um, because we're doing conference calls, we need to have each of the commissioners roll call in. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. So, Don Preventure, are you okay. here? I am here, Don Preventure. I am here at my home. Okay. Yes. Kenneth Ayers. Kenneth Ayers is here at the MVP. Wolf. Welcome, Patrina. Here. Thank you, guys. Sorry about that. The first one is ESR number 49, and that's to advance the, uh, the final design phase for the engineering related to the engineering at well number two. We know over the last few months we've sort of worked on uh, finalizing the concept and the preliminary approach to that. So this design is to advance the fast treatment facility at well number two, for well number two, and it does not include the raw water transmission main, and it does not include anything um, at well number three at this point since we've sort of put that on hold temporarily. So the final design phase, and if you're following along, guys, I'm looking at our cover letter. If you have that in your packets, dated March 13, 2022, I'm on the second page of the cover letter. Yeah, got it. And so this ESR 49 authorizes, um, if you were to authorize it, includes the final design, as I just mentioned. It includes surveying the, the project site. I think it's about 11 acres. Uh, topo survey so that we can complete the design subsurface geotechnical work borings and probes in a geotechnical report to uh, for the foundation and, and soils analysis for the building and the infiltration uh, basin it includes permitting um, work it includes an RSSCT at well number two one of the reasons we're suggesting this be done is that the RSSCT that was done was one was done on wells two and three combined after iron and manganese treatment. So we felt um, to do the proper due diligence, we really should be looking at well number two alone since that's how this, so that would mimic the full scale. We felt that the, the other RSSCT was focused on the combined water after iron and manganese and we were just a little concerned that things could be different. So we wanted to, uh, to do another RSSCT. And then the last piece of ESR 49 includes uh, the bidding work so that we'd be prepared to bid it once we have the design um, approved and ready to go. Yeah, Keith, I got a question if you want on, on the um, RSSCTs. Um, at one time I thought Lynette said something about um, the carbon vendor doing some of their own studies for the RSSCT. They did. And, uh, she did. We have, we have we've been trying to advance that. It hasn't happened. Um, oh. Knowing that that might still happen, if we felt comfortable um, with them doing it, and they actually end up doing it, we wouldn't have to pull the trigger on this. But we also didn't want to be in the point, you know, where where we'd be relying on the vendors' um, RSSCT. This one's done third party, independent, unbiased, and we can also use other carbons. 
than just the one being supplied or being managed by the uh, the other vendor. So it's a little bit um, more of a conservative approach. It does cost you a little bit more money, but it's the same way we approached Wells 4 and 5 um, and 7 and 8. So, yeah. Attached to the, uh, the the cover letter is ESR 49 itself. Um, you've had it for a couple of weeks. I, unless you want me to walk through them line by line, um, um, you know, I, I won't do that unless you'd like me to. But um, what it does is it details the scope of the work. It's very much similar to what we did on four and five and seven, eight as well. Um, I will comment on the schedule. Um, we are three or four months behind in terms of starting the design phase for well two, but with the schedule we're proposing here is we're proposing to make that back up so that we'd be on track to bid it on our original schedule that we um, had proposed. So we're kind of in the position where we'd really like to, if we want to keep to, to keep some of the schedules, we probably really ought to take some action on this one. Do you want me to go through the rest of them, Dawn, or do you want to take these one by one? Um, yeah, I think we can just go through one by one. Um, as far as the DSR 49, um, I, it, I just wanted to confirm it does, the design will consider future expansion if we do find another well source in the uh, Natica Brook corridor that we tie in that you are going to make provisions in the design so that we can add additional tanks and, and pump out that building in the future. Is that yeah, if you, yeah, if you look at the top of page two of ESR 49, so it's the second page of ESR 49 itself, it addresses that point um, specifically, Don. Yeah. I think it's the last item on that page, right? First item. So it's the page two first item, top of page two. Uh, facility of World 2 will be designed to accommodate the expansion if other sources are to be treated at the facility to the extent possible. Okay. It's also on the last, the very last line on that page, too, I think. So, all right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep, both places, you're right. Okay, does this, um, does this amount actually, how does that match with the <coughs> estimated, um, the estimated engineering services that were included with the Warren articles last year? Well, it's actually probably quite a bit less because it doesn't include well number three anymore. Um, so if, if you were to compare it to that, it would be less. Um, we've also put in there, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, to see it specifically, but we're, we're, we are recognizing some of the work that's been done on seven and eight and four and five in terms of standard details and so forth. So the level of effort on this one, although, although the number's pretty big, the treatment plant cost is about, the treatment plant magnitude is about twice that of seven and eight, but the costs aren't. So it's, it's starting, you're starting to see some value on the, on the economy of scales here. Okay. And in terms, yeah, in terms of percentage of construction, it's probably one of the lowest ones, um, which is one of the other measures that we pay attention to on design phase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we was about to ask that. Okay, cool. So the only other question I have is that the property line survey is actually excluded um, on in this contract. So is that something yeah. that's something we're going to need at some point, or? Yeah, well, well, the way we approached that, Don, is we figured we'd start with seeing what evidence, doing the topography survey and start with uh, what evidence we could find in the field. If it's already well defined, then that we could get by with that. But if it started becoming an issue or a dispute, then maybe we'd step up to a, a boundary survey. But um, we didn't know that yet. We, we felt you'd take that in a stepwise fashion. Did we have to do a boundary survey at Wells 4 and 5 or not? No. We haven't done any anywhere yet. All right, because I'm, I'm surprised to hear that because I thought to present any plan in front of the planning board, they always wanted a boundary survey. But if we already no. did this on Wells 4 and 5, then um, that, that's good. Hopefully we don't need it on this one either. So I'm good with this ESR. I don't know if we want to uh, have any other questions. If not, maybe we can, somebody can make a motion to accept. Um, Keith, that does... 
VSR 49 does have that a couple boundaries though, doesn't it? Th doesn't it include that one? Um, we think the property's encroaching. Isn't that one boundary going to be part of the survey? Yeah, I think what we said would just. Hmm? You want to take a look at it? I'll take a look, yeah. I don't know when it's going to Do you know what? Zoom meetings and stuff? I'm sorry, guys. We can barely hear you. We're trying to figure out why the volume um, just went down on his phone. I had a phone call come in, and and ever since then, it, it's uh, the volume is way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to. We're gonna, we may have to, yeah. we got one of the Merrick TV guys here. He's going to help us out. <laughs> okay. I heard, him, I heard him say my name, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> Can you get out? Is there anything like running in the background? Or? I just closed everything. See if he... Oh, okay. Was it a, was it a, yeah. Yeah. Can come take a look? I'm trying to. <laughs> was it an email just or was it a. It was an email. Hmm. 
Yeah, it was an email. Is it easy to just boot back up and do not disturb, I guess, or? I, I already got out of everything, so. Oh, this is fine. We should do this again. <laughs> first year, because I have ah, been going go. to public meetings for 25, 30 years, and the first time. <laughs> no! I'll get it back. You can edit if I start swearing, right? I want to start trial. Join. Do you need the code? Uh, I can't even. Give it to me. Go to your email. I don't, it, it wasn't in my email. It's, that was a thing. Oh, it was from me. The email's from me, remember? Because I forwarded it to you. All right. Keep going. Yeah. This makes it easier. Mm hmm. Okay, now do video. All right, can you hear us? No, yeah. Yes, sir. Awesome. I did that last time. It shut off on me. It's good. Okay, is everybody there? There we go. What? Oh. Okay, ready? Yep. All right, third time is the charm, right? So. <laughs> I shall make a move motion, not a movement. Oh my god. We need to be here in this one. Alright, I'll make a motion oh. to move forward with ESR forty nine as proposed. In uh, accordance to the of the rules of the Christian Warren article number does anybody know? Uh three? Three or no. I don't know if that matters. I think we just have to say where the money right. coming from, what account, right? Yep. What is it? Uh, system development or what What account is it? I don't know. No, this is the uh, drinking water, groundwater funding and SRF funding, isn't it? Yes. But the engineering is coming from there too? Yeah. Yep. It's all coming okay. From the same office. Yep. Okay. Well, let's go on there then. All right, motion by Wolf. Seconded by Ken Ayers. Second by Ken Ayers. All those in favor, signify by saying aye, and I believe we're going to need a roll call, too. So, everybody say aye. Um, Wolf, you want to start first? What's, what is your vote? I vote for it. Aye. Wolf, I'm Ken, Ken Ayers Ken. says aye. So, two in favor, and, and I'm in favor of it, too, so that's... Three zero zero 
in favor? All right, we all good with that one? Yep. All right, so, okay, let's move on to um, ESR number 50 for the system-wide evaluation. Okay, and that one is to cover a few of the things that came up during the design phases and our um, uh, value engineering efforts over the last few months, and one of them was dealing with corrosion control. So we took a scope of work we had done previously and recently in Portsmouth and, and um, worked with the district to develop um, uh, to, uh, to develop it for Merrimack. So that's basically a desktop study with some sampling that would be getting assist out of from the district to uh, look at optimizations of chemical feeds or chemicals for corro optimizing the corrosion control. So that's one part of that ESR. The other one was the radio and SCADA evaluation, just to to make sure that we've built in the long-term needs for any radio system upgrades and SCADA support for the new facilities. And then the last one was to assist in the um, cost um, evaluations as Emory and Garrett starts looking at source alternatives that we would just provide assistance in capital cost needs so that a, um, as alternatives are developed, we can put costs to them um, for alternatives to well number three. And uh, we have prices for the, we have budgets for the corrosion control at 23 2 Twenty-three thousand two hundred, and the master plan, master plan update, which deals with the with the we call it a master plan update, deals with the uh, well number three and the alternatives to it at sixteen nine, and we are waiting for one number from TCS on the radio evaluation, and I'm not sure, Peter, if you know we got that. That's why that number says TBD. Um, so we might have to hold authorization on that one until we get it, but um, I think we're under it, that whole effort would be somewhere between 10 and 20, probably closer to the 20,000, but we don't have that final number from the sub. Do we, Pete? That's correct. We do not have that. Yeah. So we're waiting on that one. Um, but the rest, the rest, um, the rest we do know. I don't see a scope of ESR. There's a couple of staple together. So just look through your packet. Keith, I did have a, a question. On the corrosion control optimization part piece, does it make sense to hold off until after we've, we've treatments in place, the, the, the different treatment plants? I, mean, could... I think there is, some, yeah, I, I, I don't think um, that would be a, um, I don't think that would harm anything. Um, in other words, but a lot of what we're going to be doing is desktop anyway, so you could do it, but it also, I don't know that it would hurt to wait a little bit. Um, there is a component in there, though, that we're starting to make sure that, you know, we don't get ourselves trapped in some of the final design efforts and construction that if we miss something um, that we've, you know, that we've accommodated it for in the design. So there's that little piece, making sure that whatever corrosion control optimization improvements we need are wrapped into the design. That's what I would think. I think you'd probably want to do it before the design, because if there's something you need to change in the design, you'd want to know before it's built, right? Yeah, and I don't think there's a lot, um, you know, that we'd have to, that we would be losing because the treatment, plant, uh, treatment facilities aren't online yet. We're just really trying to set up the flexibility for you in the long run with some target values. But my right. suggestion on this one would be I, I would like to get the TCS number, and I, I mean, I think waiting one month is okay. And so we can make sure we get that number back, and then at your next meeting, you can act on this one. That was this. Yeah, that was this. I'm sorry, Don. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think we probably need to hold off because we don't have a final number on it anyway. But if there's any other questions, by all means, let's, let's have the questions. Well, I get, uh, if I may, Don, my point was just just for the uh, corrosion control optimiz optimization piece to hold off on, because um, like for the master plan update, my end, my understanding is part of what we're doing for well three ties in with that, correct? Uh, the master 
plan update is, is, is somewhat independent from the con corrosion control optimization. I mean, they can be treated independent. The master plan work ties into just the alternatives for well number three, yeah. But okay. separate from corrosion control. And then my only other point to the skate and radio evaluation would be, um, I kind of, I guess my feeling would be to hold off on purchasing radios until all the treatment plants are in. That way, that we we um, we have the newest radios. They're all purchased at the same time with with warranties and, and all of that. Yeah, and not and just to be clear, some of this work is radio path study, um, evaluation of your existing infrastructure, and developing recommendations to wrap into a purchase. This is in new radios. It's just the assessment of your current infrastructure. Okay. Who would be performing that? Uh, I think we're putting the radios under uh, the Well 2 project. Excuse me? I think the radios were going to be going under the Well 2 project to the last project, as Ron was mentioning. Right, but who yeah. would be performing that work? Is that was the the asset, I'll, I'll take that. The assessment is going to be done by uh, TCS, who's just a specialty consultant that does the radio path work and the radio work. And then the SCADA evaluation is done by SMR, who is our SCADA um, specialist who's been doing all the designs on the treatment plan. So they're going to do the evaluation, the assessment. But any, any recommendations that come out for infrastructure improvements, purchasing, or new hardware will be, as Pete said, bid in contract two. For water treatment plant too. Okay. Would the, would the optimization uh, corrosion control op optimization is be uh, bid into that as well? Any improvements recommendations that come out of co corrosion control, op control optimization would be wrapped into the contract bid documents. Yeah. Anything further than we're already doing? I mean, we we're already putting in new chemical feed systems and new chemical feed, but. Anything further that comes out of the optimization, we would make sure to wrap into whatever bids are left, really, which is con is which is well too. Okay. And it might require a possible change order and uh, well number seven eight project, depending on what the recommendations were. I would like to suggest two things. Um, I see something here, attend up to two meetings with MVD to review findings, and I can only assume that's probably somewhere else in here as well. Um, trust me when I tell you that I understand why you put that in uh, as a general protection for yourself, but considering the amount of work that MVD is having coming your way, ongoing, including the extra work for, uh, you know, for the sink of bean, discussions we're having here on the side and, and some other things. I would rather not have a limitation like that in our contracts. We meet so frequently anyway. And you know I'm, I guess I would I wouldn't like us to see starting to nickel and dime each other. Not that you are, I, I don't think you are, but you know, when language like that when I see language like that in contracts I, I fear that we will be in the future. Still? No, that's fine. I think there's plenty of business coming coming your way anyway, and uh, you you guys have received that vote of confidence already. So, so. okay, I will tell you if yeah, I think you probably even see that in previous design contracts, and I don't think we've ever exceeded our value. So, um, I agree with you, Wolf, and I think it would be suicide on my part to start nickel and dime over meeting attendance so i'm comfortable striking it yeah and, you know i mean we can mm -hmm. do as much we see that some of this works remote fairly well maybe you don't always have to come down even right if it's yeah once we not so much presentations i'm not yeah. opposed to that at all okay i will strike that we will attend mvd meetings to review findings i'm, I'm okay with that yeah, and you're more than welcome to speak up if this, you know, something is becoming skewed. The other thing that I, that I would, and it might be a little bit sticky, but I don't like the word master plan update, even though it might refer to a master plan that's out there. How about a master plan supplement? So does it refer to an actual master plan that's out there? 
Yeah, it does to to the master plan that we talked. About. That was our intent. Was our intent was just to, so just so that it ties to your master plan. Um, I can I've I've used words in the past for other projects where it becomes a supplement. It's because uh, we're not updating the whole master plan yet. We're just supplementing it. That's fine. You, okay. Either one is fine. I, I wasn't sure about the master plan because it sounds a little bit. <clears throat> I don't know, the school, school board is using it and some other, it can be a pretty big, you know, scope of a master plan and I'm not sure if it's always. We that. weren't intending to generate a master plan, just supplement the existing one that you, that's been done. Okay, that's fine. Okay, any other questions? All right, so I think we're just gonna move on from this because we can't vote on it right now because it doesn't have a fixed number. Um, but before we go to the next thing, I just wanted to touch base on something that just clarify, are you doing any ongoing work on well three right now, as far as, um, any kind of op optimization or anything on that? Cause I, I wouldn't want to be doing any more work on well three until we know we're going to use it. Right. Cause I know we're not, I misunderstand something. Yeah, no, we're, we've stopped work, any design, we stopped any design work on well number three. The only thing we do owe you, Don, is a final uh, version of the report that documents the path to where we got today. In other words, why we're delaying the work on well three, but there's no more design efforts going on. You're just going to see a report issued, which is imminent. It's not that far away anyway. Survey okay. work stopped, and so forth. Um, so... Although I say survey work, Peter, did we, um, was I, at one of the last board meetings, I think there was some discussion on whether or not we should finish the survey. We started because we were 80% into it. And I think we decided we were just going to do it. Get it. Yeah. So that, that would be the one other piece, Don, where we are going to deliver the final survey work, but, but the rest of it's stopped. Yeah, that's what I remember too. Okay. Okay. ESR 51 then? Uh, yes. Yep. ESR 51 was just, uh, and I think we had talked about this before too, in some of the efforts um, and ongoing this discussions around well four and five and St. Cobain and um, your efforts um, in the community action that's been um, taking place. This was just a technical allowance to cover those those meetings and um, extra steps you've asked us to do. It's not a very well-defined scope other than we just said, as you request or as you ask us to do things, we would bill it. And it's just, we put a capped allowance of about $15,000 uh, 15, there to cover those things. Right, and that includes the, the meeting we had initially, plus the two um, conference calls with yep. St. Cobain and their representatives. Yeah, and okay. some efforts that we've had just gathering information and responding to right. certain documents, but... Yeah. Yeah. Right, so the upcoming response that we talked about, talked about yesterday um, is part of that as well? It'll fit under this, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we try, you know, we put that number in there thinking if we st it shouldn't go beyond this, because if it does, I think it's going in a different path. But it felt like it was enough to do what we thought you had in front of us. Okay, understood. Yeah, but we know this is uh, unclear where this is going to be heading. So understood if this is possibly a first out of several. Okay, any other questions on this one? If not, I guess we can entertain a motion if anyone's so inclined. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> Wolf, your, your mic's off. That's weird. Okay, I had it unmuted. Thank you for letting me know. <clears throat> so, yeah, since I'm the one attending these meetings um, together with Ron, I'm sorry, with Don, both really. Um, I should be probably moving on that one too. So I'll make a motion to move forward with um, engineering service request 51 as proposed in the amount of $15,000 to assist the MBD with negotiations. Ken Ayers second. Um, and we need a source for that. That would, I don't know. Funding if source. I wonder if this should be coming out of the uh, reserve for legal counsel. 
since it's associated with those negotiations. Or if that's solely for um, for um, actual legal counsel. I think it was pretty right. specific just for legal. I can't air a second. So. Yeah, we still need to think about where we get the where we take the money from. Engineering. We do have engineering. Um, I, sorry, I didn't mean to walk in anybody. Well, the, the the project funds for four and five, right? Wouldn't this actually be pretty appropriate to take it from there? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's. It's an effort to try and save us money. Right. Let's just come out of capital reserves, or uh, we can go to let's. We can use engineering. We have general engineering for stuff just like this. Yeah, I was wondering about that too. That probably is the cleanest. Take it right out of there. Like out of the operating budget? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I think so too. We have the line if we if we start over uh, we start over expending that line, we can actually shift monies around in the budget to to accommodate. But um, yes, I think that's where we should put it to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would that would have been probably my first guess. I was for some reason thinking it's legal, but you're right. That's. That's where it should come from out of the operating budget. Okay, so no further questions, then uh, we'll call the vote by roll call. Wolf, Juan Schoen, how do you vote? In favor. Ken Ayers? Yes. And myself, Don Preventure, in favor. So that carries 300. Zero, zero. So we can move on to um, engineering service request number 52. This is the last one we have in front of you, and it's to deal with the bidding for well seven and eight. And um, we're, about a, we're, we're ready to bid imminently on this project. So if this thing's authorized and we get your authorization to bid, we could be advertising for well seven and eight probably as soon as next week, um, if not shortly thereafter. We still, still need to get DES approval on that so we could go next week. Okay. Any concerns? Any concerns with that? Uh, the only concern would be they're reviewing plans on their cell phones from home right now, but uh, they also know that uh, this has been coming. I don't suspect it would take too long. Have we been dealing with Rick on that, Peter? No, Mike Unger, and I could bring him a hard, you know, a, a hard copy set of them. Or, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think we're looking at a you know, whatever, 65 sheets of drawing, you know, that's a, that's a lot to look at on a cell phone. <laughs> I, I, I don't think they're going to hold you up, honestly. No, I don't, I don't think so either. I think if I brought it down to it, we would have a review back within a month, I mean, within a week, rather. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if you want to reach out to them and just tell them that we're all set, ready to move, except for them holding us up, it might make, put a little more, um, you know, fire on them a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Mike's already looked at the 90% drawings, though, correct? Yes, he did look at the 90% drawings, and he said he had no comments. So I believe that this would be, like I said, I should, it should be a quick review because he's already, he's pretty much seen everything already, and we're just putting the fine tunes to it. So my suggestion would be by approval of this, if you guys make a motion to approve this ESR, you couple it with the uh, the recommendation or the authority or approval to bid pending DES approval, and then that would put on, put everything back on DES to get us to go. Right. Anybody have any further questions on this, or should we um, entertain a motion?
Hi, right, Ken. Uh, this is Ken. I just have a question. Where we before we uh, move a motion, where would, you want to discuss where, where the money would go first, where we take the money out to pay? This is from the SRF and the SRF. Oh, okay. Okay. So we need a trust fund and what? That's all going to use one pool, hopefully. All right. All right. I just passed a couple ones. We have discussion where we want to. I move a motion to to proceed on uh, PSR uh, number fifty two. PSR, excuse me. But the funding to be from the SRS and Drinking Water Groundwater Trust Fund. Correct. All right. Motion by Ken. Uh, I I'll second that. I guess. And um, so motion by Ken, second by myself, Don, for venture. Um, all those in favor, uh, we can do a roll call. Wolf Von Schoen. In favor. Ken Ayers. In favor. And myself, Don, for venture, in favor. And this is uh, subject to approval, final approval by DES. Actually, the, the, um, the contract isn't, but I, I would also want to hear that you've authorized us to bid the project subject to the approval of DDS. Unless you felt that that um, approval just did that or if, if that just did it. If it's okay with Ken who made the motion, then... I'm uh, fine with that. And I guess... Okay, that's good by Ken. Keith... Um, All right, so I think we're... I, I, I'm sorry, Don, I just said one... What's that, Ron? I'm sorry. I just had one question. Um, do you think we need to clarify that, like, project, uh, well, seven and eight project funds? Because there is there is part of that whole piece was there was capital reserves that were, like, our skin in the game. Yeah. And, and that was actually going to be the design. Should we clarify that to just to project funds? If that would be suffice? Yeah, why don't we repeat the, the, the vote and, and do a clean motion here one more time? If it's on you again. Also, Jenna, Amanda has, has permission to go by. She's not right, cringing so. over there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on to you. Uh, Ken Ayers, uh, motion for ESR. Uh, 51, right? 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. For, what was it? For the project? In the amount of 16,000. About a 16,000. To be provided funding for, for by the... Well, seven and eight project funds. <laughs> by seven and eight project funds. <laughs> Including the ability to bid the project. Including the bid the project. And continuing the DES approval. Pending D is horrible. <laughs> Love the teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start right. the line next. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do the roll call again. Uh, Wolf von Schoen, how do you vote? In favor. Ken Ayers, how is your vote? In favor. And myself, Don Preventure, in favor. So that passes 3 0 0. And, um,. I think that concludes the ESRs from Underwood. Um, yeah, I'd like to add one thing to that is, uh, so with all this uh, that's happening with the uh, COVID-19, you know, we were supposed to have a, a pre-bid meeting and uh, then we'll have the bid opening and those are supposed to be public, you know, meetings and, you know, so we will do something slightly different. I know, uh, Keith, you did one already this week on a, a bid opening remotely or something like that. So we might be looking at uh, tweaking up our normal procedures. Uh, yeah, and, uh, yeah, and that's, a good, that's a good point, Peter. And, and 
just to give you guys a sense on how Underwood and things are changing hourly. If you if you saw governors talk about half hour ago, an hour ago, but the way Underwood's been approaching is we're not slowing things down. We're just doing things a little differently. And a pre bid meeting would be done by a conference call um, in remote spaces, public, you know, open to the public. It's not. It's never been a recorded meeting, but it's at least video recorded. We always take notes, so we're going to be doing the same. We just did it in Dover, and it seems to be working. So we just got, got to be a little creative, but we're trying to accommodate the projects and just doing what the guidance tells us to do. Yeah. Yep. Okay. There was a change order summary in our packet. I don't know if we need to go over that now. I think somebody had just asked for that in the last meeting. That's probably why it's in there. Yes, uh, uh, Wolf asked for that at the at the last meeting, and uh, so I just put together this sort of little summary of, of you know where we started with with the initial uh, project cost, and then the summary of each one of the change orders. And as we go along, I can keep adding to that. And yeah. you know, just kind of keep you up the up to speed. Yeah, and, and once again, you guys are delivering, so I really appreciate that. I think having this, you know, at hand is is important, and you know, it ensures that that, that we can claim that we're well informed. So is this what you were looking for? That. Yeah, it's awesome. It's perfect. Yeah. Great. Perfect. It's nice that it accumulates. Uh, and in, in comparison, you know, the, or accumulates on the contract, uh, total contract cost as well. It's perfect. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Really appreciate that. Yep. Yeah. So on that note, are we um, on well two design uh, the PFAS treatment plant? Um, have you guys done any additional furthering of the site plan layout? I'm just curious if you brought that a little further yet or not. Peter? No, we haven't done anything with that. Okay. So we, were, we really needed that survey before we could, you know, really play around more with it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just wanted to make sure we, you didn't have something that uh, we haven't seen, so that's all right. Yeah. Do you guys have anything more, Keith and um, Pete? Not unless you have other questions, and if I know you got some other things, but unless you feel like I, you need me, I may step step away to get some deal with this uh trying to figure out what to do with the governor's order <laughs> so. yeah keith yeah. one thing um so do we want to talk about um because the governor just came out you know, within the last hour about that work stoppage do we want to talk to the you know commissioners about possibly keeping going with the construction of um four or five yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm about to give some guidance to my staff, but I'll I will suggest to to you that um, the district we may need to be having discussions, or you may be, need to be having discussions with somebody that that tells us this is essential or non essential or fits within the order or has to stop. I I don't know, but uh, I want we got to face that and uh, and and deal with it. Did he call for a stoppage of all construction activities? I haven't seen the order, so I, 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 you know, I go right back to the orders, and it wasn't published just before we started this meeting. So I can tell you that um, my my employer is dealing with this in in like over a handful of states, almost a dozen of states, um, that have some kind of order in effect, and or at least advisor in effect, and in almost all of them, construction is not affected. Specifically, not if it's projects that are associated with um, infrastructure. And uh, you know, like water supply, for example, electrical supply, um, and or um, supply chain in general, which water is also part of the supply chain, right? So the idea is to hold this infrastructure and the improvement of the infrastructure in the interest of ensuring that supply down the road. But in the end, to be honest, this is something that really Penta needs to really find out as as the um, you know as the operating company on site. And well, well, I, I would just ca yeah, true, true to a degree. But I would caution on that. I just want to make sure that whatever decisions we make are informed because um, the contract you hold with Penta, if they make a choice or. You know, if, if, if you leave it up to them, they're, they're, one of the things we're struggling with is a shutdown is going to cost somebody money. Right. And, and we don't want it to cost you or Penta money, frankly. So uh, I think before we do anything, I think we need to see the order and have some discussions. But I agree. Yeah. 
What I'm just pointing it out anyway. Yeah. What I saw on the uh, Debian Warehouse website, um, it didn't say construction couldn't go on, but it, it, it did say essential. So, I, you know, the, you know, I know he's closing the beaches and then like barber shops, you know, those kind of things. Uh, I would, I mean, I definitely want to double check, but I would think they would be considered essential, especially where we're cleaning up a contaminant out of the out of the, the water system. So, um. what concerns me is if we don't get these wells online this summer and we get a drought, you know, we could be in a in a more of a dire situation. So, so but um, the way this was handled in other states um, by my employer was that literally an informal. Um, uh, request for a uh, for an exemption waiver was mailed to the governor's office, and it actually came back usually within hours, if not uh, a day or two, in the, the worst case. So what maybe we need to do is uh, Ron um, and, and Joel, as, as the you know executing staff, executive staff, maybe do exactly that. Um, it was actually really informal. It was a letter with some substantiating documents attached to it. Who are we? Who is the MVD? What is our mission, right? Uh, to deliver clean water to our citizens in Merrimack. And um, that these uh, construction sites are, you know, necessary to continue that mission and to uphold that supply specifically in summertime. So um, maybe then a reference to the different companies that are on site at this time, Penta, for example, and maybe some contractors. Yeah, we can do that. that yep. Including those. Yeah, we can work, up, we can work yeah, on that. This is Jamie speaking. We um, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We we have had the same thing, Wolf, um, in Massachusetts, Virginia, where we've requested, and all the water supply projects we're working on are all considered essential so far, and it was all. <clears throat> I think uh, there was a, a, like you said, a res reasonably informal letter that was sent to the governor's office to to register. So. I concur with you 100%. It's a good idea. Yeah, so Ron, maybe that's something that you guys want to try and send out today. It, can, it really doesn't have to be much. Um, I would put it on an official letterhead as an attachment and not just in the email. Yes. Uh, signed, right, signed and scanned. And then uh, you know, probably would be good to, I don't know, Jamie, can you guys maybe, um, or, or Peter, can you guys maybe send uh, Ron a list of the contractors that are currently active on site? in the foreseeable future so we can have those included yeah and i did um so I, we talked i talked to the, our field representative out there joel and uh penta feels or at least their position right now is they want to continue work and they feel that it's an essential um essential project so they want to just keep going so so you're not getting any hold back from them on it and, and we're, we're our driller is showing up on Monday to start the test well drilling, you know, at four and five. Um, so we'll, you know, we'll, you'll have to put Barry Miller on there as well. Okay. So do we all agree that that's the path forward that we're going to try and get that out? Ideally today before the shutdown starts tomorrow, first case tomorrow. Yeah, so the, uh, the list of contractors, what is that for? For a notification, for a, an application of a waiver. Um, oh, okay, for those workers. Those okay. Right. Okay, yeah. But we don't need, I don't think we need individual workers, but we need uh, at least the name of the contractors just to be safe. Because then our application basically extends to them. And I, and I think the additional uh, point that we're bid, bidding, we're entering into a bid on a new project, which we don't know who the contract would be, but I'd also want an opinion on that. Because it's one thing to keep a current project active, that's active going, it, it might be another to say, don't start new. But we, uh, we definitely should include that. But I like that approach, and we can help Ron craft it. You'll have to see... Yeah, you have to see what the application is going to be like because each state, I think, has got a different, a slightly different approach. But I don't know if New Hampshire has got it pulled together. <clears throat> but um, there, there should be a definite in in the, and I haven't seen it either. But in the announcement, there should be a process that they identify. And should those go in as two separate requests instead of one? I do one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I would try to get I, I would try to get you a broad brushed approval for the for the district. Sure. 
Okay, good. So um, I'm going to sign off. I, uh, although I'd like to see Jamie's stuff, but I do have some other stuff. If you, unless there's anything else you need from me or Underwood. Um, probably not you, but I don't know if Peter can hang on. I just don't know if something's going to cross-reference with what you guys are doing. Maybe not, but... I don't mind sticking around, but I just wanted to add, um, we just found out uh, the Volk was going to be, their vessel uh, got delayed by one day. So right now it's scheduled to be coming in, uh, being delivered on April 9th now. Okay. So where fingers crossed that none of this work stoppage affects any, you know, that delivery of that, you know, you know that piece of equipment. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. And I'm sure I'll see you online again. Okay. Thanks, Thank Keith. you. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Thank you. I don't know how to leave, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can kick you out. <laughs> Keith, can you hear me for one second? Yeah, yeah Jamie. Yeah. I need, uh, on a separate matter, I need to catch up with you on that 401 certificate for Portsmouth. But I'll catch you tomorrow, okay? Okay, good. Yeah, we got authority to bid, but I'm around tomorrow. I'm here, I know, at least for one more day. Okay. All right. All right, see you. Okay, bye. All right, so uh, next on the agenda is um, discussion with um, Emery and Garrett, GZA, for the sodium chloride reduction project. So this shouldn't take too long. Um, do you guys have the figures? One, and I'm sorry about my camera. I'm working this morning. I have no idea. It's a brand new computer, so I have no excuses, but that makes sense. But anyways, do you have figures one, two, three, and four, or one, two, and three that um, on the on the maps for our values? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so one of the things that's been really interesting is that we went down. If you recall, we, we were uh, asked to go and do some chloride measurements on a, a, a significant number of areas around wells two, three, and then four, five, and then seven and eight. And in the, if you can see the map, you'll see that the yellow areas are the sensitive areas. What we went through is identified the storm drain and what direction the flow of the storm, uh, storm water was flowing and where they were discharging. And I think probably to show you the the one that's probably really illustrative is if you pick out figure two, if you can grab figure two. Yep. You'll see a dashed black line around the storm water system. And that storm water system has, a, you know, the, the, black, the black dashed lines show the boundary, but then the arrows show the flow. And what is really interesting is that the flow if you look at wells four and five, the flows come down on the uh, near where the Dunkin' Donuts is over in that Front Street um, region, and all flow towards that stormwater pond, detention pond. And there we're seeing in the stormwater detention pond, 443 chloride in the groundwater right there, 430, 360. So we know that the salt load from that parking lot and that stormwater runoff area is all going towards the wells and dumping right there, right? And that's from that's from Watershed A, correct? That's from Watershed A, correct. If you look at Watershed B, now, now you see everything is moving towards that triangle that says 1900. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're dumping. What's staggering is that this data is is so specific and is the smoking gun that says, guys, we know now where the chlorides are going, what we have to do to get this out. Because we got 1,900 ppm of chlorides going into that wow. drain there off of that subdivision. That's just insanity. And all of that, you see the blue line around there? That's our recharge area. So all that water that's contaminated is going straight into the well four and five region. 
So the next step, you know, uh, when we went down there and started diagramming out these stormwater runs, I was just, uh, I, I really was taken back by the fact that whoever's telling us they're doing a good job reducing the salt load on the plowing in the parking lots, this data tells me that they're not. They're just not paying attention to this. So it's kind of the next step um, that we have to take. To, and, I, and I didn't prepare a proposal for this action, but I wanted to have this conversation that the, the next step is the work scope that I think we need to go that's, that takes this back to, this, to this town, takes it back to the planners, takes it back to the owners of the property and say, look guys, you can't, we can't, we can't be pretending anymore. This data is real. It's there. And we are seeing it in our production wells. And we've got to stop it. This next winter season has to stop. Now, if you look at figure number one, right? The smoking gun is, if you look at the yellow, again, that's the sensitive area. All along that region where the, where the state plows is where we're getting the high salt loads. We know that the state trucks are dumping salt. We already saw the evidence with the video before, but now the data says, okay, we got 590, 570, 450, 430, 409, 520, 690. All of that is high, high, high chlorides that are being dumped in there. And those are not just groundwater points. You'll see that the circles are the groundwater points, but the triangles are the surface water measuring points, and they're all substantial. Now, if you go to seven and eight, if you look at well three, why is seven and eight pretty low? Because we're not seeing a lot of salt load along uh, in that Route 101A area. And because now uh, Tom Depot and other people in that area are not dumping salt, you know, they're, they're abiding by their salt measures, we're not seeing, you know, the, the salt loads at seven and eight that we're seeing at one and three, and I mean, two and three, and of course, at four and five. And then when you go over to look at figure four, which you probably don't have, but you might have, we you, know, have it. The, you know, Mitchell Woods, and there's no salt, there's no salt. There. You know, the salt is extremely low. So um, these maps, I think, can be used. I wanted, I wanted to just discuss with them briefly that these guys, this can be our arsenal to go before the town and the planning board. And I thought that it makes sense for us next to put together a proposal to say, okay, next steps of what we're going to do to identify every single person who's contributing to that process that we now know for the stormwater runoff, for the parking lots, for these stormwater retention ponds. We're going to have to get the town right out there and, 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 and walk with us. Um, now, that may not happen tomorrow, but that's the next step. So I think Agreed. this is a great information. Uh, really applaud you guys for having that done. And I'm actually surprised at how damning the evidence is, <laughs> to be honest. So. Yeah, something that stands out to me is when you look at figure um, figure one, the, the town portion of Continental Boulevard, which is from Industrial Boulevard to the north, Yeah, the numbers are, are pretty low. Right. Well, they're, they're much lower than from Industrial Boulevard to the south. Correct. And that's the part in Industrial Boulevard itself, which is the part that the state plows. Right. So um, I also think you've got some fairly high numbers over on the Fidelity's property as well. Correct. So, so I would you're... definitely think it's it's prudent to, you know, talk, speak to them at some point, um, whether that's probably with the town, because I don't know what authority we have. I think the authority comes from the town, if I'm not mistaken. So I, I, I totally agree with you that I think this is the information we need to present that shows really where the problem areas are. Uh, yeah, and, and, we, and I, I, I agree. And I, I'm hopeful we can get directly to Fidelity, too. I mean, I think Fidelity is a good enough, you know, community servant to understand that they got to be part of this. and. I, I feel like we're going to get a little pushback from the town a little bit, maybe, um, but I'm not sure. But I think the town, obviously, we, we need to present this to the town first. And I think we, you know, we'll, we'll seek their permission. But I really would like to get in front of Fidelity. So. Right. Well, um, 
Ron, can you um, confirm, I believe we did send a letter to all of the wellhead um, properties in, in our aquifer protection districts, not, not just the ones who are um, not grandfathered. I believe we sent letters to everybody. So uh, my point is when we were at the town council a month or so ago, they asked us if we even notified anybody yet, and we said we hadn't. Correct. So um, I think now that we have, mm -hmm. so that's our first step is we've already notified the people, the property owners in in the wellhead protection areas that they need to curtail their salt use and look at alternatives. So, you know, that was a first step. So I think now it makes sense to follow up. But is that is that the case as far as you remember the letter went out to? It did, yes. I, just, I don't yeah. know the exact date it went out, but it did go out after, after the uh, town meeting we had. Right. And I actually got one in my own house, so <clears throat> that's good because I am in the in the in the wellhead protection area, or the um, not the wellhead protection area, but the um, zone of contribution, or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, so with all the, right. So, so Don, with your permission or the commission's permission, I'd like to to uh, put together a proposal for the next steps on this, and send that to you for consideration at the next meeting. Are we not doing anything with change order number two? What's that? Are we, we're not looking at yeah. change order number two? Well, I want to modify that um, slightly. Um, can you read that? Can, can you have that? Can you read that? Uh, yeah. Jill? Yeah. Task number four is to review existing plow routes with the town and DOT within each of the WAPAs and determine whether reduced salt or no salt, no salt application areas can be expanded. And that was $4,500. And then task five was the coordination with neighboring municipalities for $3,500. Yeah, so, I, you know, we could authorize that. I'd like to modify it slightly to, if, if you want to vote on it tonight, you can. But I would like to modify that slightly to incor incorporate um, meetings and discussions directly with the town. You've got uh, one more and, task and on here, Jamie. What's that? You've got one more task on here yeah. that I haven't read yet. Um, th so task seven was to prepare and present an educational PowerPoint presentation on the sodium and chloride groundwater issue and present it to the interested citizens, groups, and property owners. And that was one meeting for 1800 Yeah. So I didn't know if that was okay. part of what you were talking about. Um, not really so much as a presentation, but I just want to uh, – I would really like to just meet – meet with the town and, and have this conversation with them and then go out and start talking to some of our, you know, have, it's going to be difficult with COVID-19, but to have this conversation with a number of landowners. Um, so I think it'd be better if I actually, and then I'll leave it up to you to revise this as a work order because we're not going to be going door to door anyways in the next 30 days it's to revise the work order and then submit for discussion and approval next at next meeting. Okay. If that's acceptable. Uh, I'm good with that. If, if, that's, if that's the way you want to go, that, that's, that's fine by me. Okay. <clears throat> Jimmy, Jimmy Wolf here speaking. Um, one comment that I had in the last meeting, and I think you started to address that maybe I don't, it seems like this is a different, um, more description and scope of services than it was last time. So it says here that you are meeting, for example, in task one with uh, stakeholders. And eventually here it says in the middle of the page or maybe two thirds down, this work task will include preparing a presentation to the group and a letter report describing follow up action items. One of the, um, not complaints, but one of the questions I had in the last meeting was, with all of these meetings that are going to be happening there, what is the tangible outcome of these meetings? You know, is, is there going to be meeting minutes? Is there going to be a report, a visit report of some sort, some kind of summary of these individual meetings and maybe even collectively? Is that what you're trying to address here with uh, a letter report describing follow-up action items? Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. What, one of the things that is difficult is to get Every, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to just have meetings and then have nothing happen as a result of it. So, you know, in order for us to make change, um, we actually have to have some some support from the town that says, "Okay, we're on the same team. We drink this water, and we are going to do X, Y, and Z to support you." 
And so, you know, I, I'm at a little bit of a loss as to getting that done, but I know we've got this letter out now to the communities, uh, to the individuals. We've met with the town. We did get some support, I think, from the town at that last mm-hmm. presentation. And I, I think, you know, the next step is to, for me to try to sort out, and I haven't done it quite frankly, well, to figure out how do we get from from where we are in the public education process to mm-hmm. accomplish something, you know, to change things. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, if you have any good con- ideas, I'm open. <laughs> but that's where I'm at. I'm kind of struggling with that. That's why I didn't really want to approve anything yet, because I, I wanted you to see this data, see what you yeah. thought, and then kind of work through it. But that you're on, I'm on the same page with you on that. Yeah, yeah, and so don't misunderstand. I'm in full support of everything you're presenting here, and I think this is something we want to move forward with. But I guess my point in the last meeting was um, just meeting with people isn't really a tangible result, right? And and I understand that you can't commit to them committing to something, right? That's not a tangible right. result we would ask you for. But um, at a minimum, I would ask that we get some kind of, um, you know, and quite frankly, we're probably going to be part of these meetings one, one way or another. Either Ron is or, you know, even some of the commissioners are. Um, but I guess I want to make sure that there's something tangible that we, that we can present after these meetings have happened um, that you know, at least show that these meetings were held and what the, what, what the content and feedback on these meetings was from, from the attendance. So some kind of... Yep. meeting minutes or summary or it can be all in one it can be individual meeting meeting minutes I, I wouldn't really I wouldn't, I wouldn't care too much about the format but I just wanted to make sure that it's more than you know like a meeting greet shaking hand having a coffee and then going back home and not that, that that's what it would be but we want to make sure we have that somewhat tangible result that shows that yep. it wasn't fair enough yep I, I I'm, I'm on the same page with that yep but in my opinion this is Don I think um it's probably important to bring those landowners to the table and show them what the effect is uh, from their sites based on your sampling effort. And they're going to basically look to us and say, well, what do you want to do about it? So I kind of think we need to have an outline of what, what action can they take? Can they, you know, what salt alternatives are there? And I know there are links to the DES website and all these things, but, I'm almost thinking we got to hold their hand a little bit more and be specific about a, 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 some kind of procedure on, you know, what not to use and, and what can be used instead. And um, ultimately, what is the regulatory requirement for this? Do we need to do some kind of a, our own bylaw or have a bylaw created or something where no sites are grandfathered because I think that's probably where this is going to have to go. Um, I, I don't, you know, obviously if they're willing to do to change their practices on their own, that's fine. But I, I think we're going to need to have some kind of an authority over them. So I don't know when that is the, the right time to look at that or not, but um, I don't know. Maybe we just need to meet with the town first. I, I, I'm just throwing ideas out there. I've never done a salt reduction study before. Um, I, I don't know how, how much experience you have with that, Jamie. I know you're kind of asking us for direction, but I don't know that we're going to be able to tell you anything better than what your experience has already been elsewhere. Well, I think it's time for, you know, one of the things I really feel we need to bring in is the state, right? The state. DOT, but mostly you know, the DES, right? The DES has uh, an ability and some authorities to protect groundwater resources. So um, at this point, because chloride is a secondary standard, it becomes it's, it becomes less uh, important to them relative to PFOA and PFOS, right? So they put their energies into PFOA and PFOS, and I get that. But at the same time, you know, my view is to start going back to, you know, going up a little higher on the food chain um, and dealing with and getting um, their view, uh, not just getting their view, finding out what legal actions that we have the authority to take um, from, an, from, a, from a utility standpoint. And that's kind of been thrown around a lot. I mean, I've had these conversations in the past, and there's a lot of wishy-wash and gray area and blah, blah, blah. But 
Right. I now feel like I have the data to actually go before the state and say, look, you know, we can't be gray anymore. We have the data. This is the this is where we're at. We're spending millions of dollars on treating PFO and PFOS, and we need your help to protect the investments that are being made to keep these wells operating. And exactly. um, and I think that's the direction we have to go. And so, in my view, that was going to be part of this. And I think that kind of leads to what can we tell the landowners to do? Um, because if we have the state support, and then we have the town support, then we can get the landowners to respond. Um, and, and I think the DES, the DES would be a good uh, person to bring, a good entity to bring to the table, because they would be able to explain that Green Snow Pro and all these other things that may be able to work for these um, these landowners. So, so maybe that, you know, getting all these parties together at another meeting, um, that maybe that's something we should probably pursue. And I, and I don't know if this is gonna take three months before we can have a meeting, maybe at the earliest with everybody sitting around a table again, but we're getting into the type of season where we can probably afford to wait a month or two if we have to, but it's something I'd like to do in person with all parties together so we can show them the figures. You know, you could probably show ahead of time and, and get that relationship with the DES so they understand these figures um, and then and then maybe bring everybody to the table so that we know what we're meeting about when the landowners come so we can explain to them, you know, how they need to change their practices and have DES there to say, hey, we're here for you. If you guys, you know, we can help you kind of decide what measures can be taken to alleviate this. So I think that's probably where it needs to go. So if you want to do um, a scope that kind of addresses those items, I think that's probably what we need to do in the immediate future, you know, being the next couple, three months, as soon as we're all able to actually meet together again. I agree. Uh I totally agree. So I will do that. I'll put something together so that you can have something for the next meeting to discuss. Um, and, and, you know, with, with the understanding that we, ha we want to be prepared to have the next salting season not go the same route. It went this way. So exactly right. Kind of our goal. Uh, we missed it this year for a riot. And it is what it is. Uh, uh, all right. Well, that's good. I did want to, uh, unless you have any more questions on that, I did want to just share two other things. Uh, one is we're drilling at uh, four and five on Monday. Uh, you know, if everything continues to go in the right direction, which the test well will go in. That'll dictate what the screen size will be for the replacement well there, four and five. And, um, <clears throat> and then uh, so that process is in place. The next item is the exploration. Uh, we need to get the snow off the ground uh, and the frost out of the ground. And I think we're, we're within a week of being able to do the geophysical work out there. Uh, and that's our plan right now is to, um, is to start that geophysical work in the next week or so. And that's around Natticook Brook, basically, right? Yeah, the Well 3 area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Jamie, I got a question for you on wells four and five. So they're going to be drilling out there on Monday for the, um, you know, for that uh, monitoring well. Test and then right. how soon after that are they going to be able to drill the production well? Uh, the goal is, as far as I know, and I can double check with Dan, but I think the goal is to go, you know, very quickly after that. Okay. You got to get, you this, you gotta get the sieve samples into the laboratory and find out what the screen size is going to be and so forth. But okay. I, I'm hopeful it'll be soon after. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have any questions for Jamie? Nope. Thank you. Okay. okay. I think we're good. Everybody, you stay too. safe. You too. too. Thank you. Bye. Right. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna get off. Right. Ron, I have one question for you. Um, are you available tomorrow if I stop by to get those contracts signed? Uh, absolutely. I was actually signing them as we they were getting approved. So. Oh, you did. Okay. Yep. Like, can I, I'll stop by around nine o'clock then tomorrow. Sure. Yep. Okay. All right then. All right. Hey, Thanks, Pete. I think you're probably good to go. 
Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Thanks a lot, Pete. Thanks, Take care. Okay, so we can move on to uh, the next item is uh, the discussion of the warrant articles and to um, assign the commissioners um, who are going to speak on the individual warrant articles. Um, if, you, if you don't mind, I would like to circle back one minute to our contractors. Yeah, um, okay. For a moment. Um, one thing that I don't like about this is, you know, we... We wave these these proposals through oftentimes because they make sense in themselves. But we have, aside from personal experience and reference in between contractors, we really don't have any gauging of whether these prices are justified, right? Most of us, you know, we have some, some construction background, so we can probably gauge a little bit, is this reasonable or not? Um, and one thing I've never yet seen is once these are waved through and start being built against is, all of those say that it's built by the hour, right? Um, I have not seen any reports that tell us whether they always deplete them, right? So is this a worst case scenario or are they sometimes only, you know, uh, billing us two thirds of that because they don't need all the hours that they projected? So for me, it seems like we're always somewhat casual and we're, I don't, that's the wrong wording. We're not casual by any means. We're we're scrutinizing these to, our, to a large extent, but <clears throat> I never know if, if we end up paying the total amount of what we approve or just a portion of that. Um, I guess what you're saying is if there was a list of all the ESRs with the budgeted values and then the built to date values, we could know where we stand on each of those budgets. Right. I don't know if something and, like that exists. And I know that when we review the invoices, when we review the payable, um, that the contractors all have uh, in the invoices a, you know, what is the approved amount and what is the build to date amount and what are, what are we building today amount. But it's somewhat painful, you know, to, to look through all these invoices and continuously track that. And often, as you guys know, sometimes we wave that through because we're traveling to work or something and we don't have a chance to look at all the details of all the invoices because we can't go physically to the office. Would it make sense for the, for the contractors to maintain a list of open orders with us beyond the project? We actually maintain a list. So we have the, the ESRs, and then we generally do a purchase order and track. As a invoice comes in, it, get de it gets deducted off of that purchase order and submitted. So we do have a running total. Um, we could certainly get that to the board if you'd like to see it. So the, the reason why I'm asking that is, you know, I mean, we're going to have probably some hard times coming here for the next year or so, right, until we all recover from, from this thing that's going on right now. And um, I, I just don't feel that we're really in, in, in good control of, of, you know, the pricing here. Again, we don't usually go and bid this, these out, right, because it really doesn't make all that much sense to have somebody else than Emery and Gary looking at some of the work that he's doing, right? We, we all understand that. So they have, a, I don't call it a monopoly, but they have a somewhat comfortable position there. I don't feel that we're getting milked by any means. I don't feel like that at all. But I also don't feel that I can tell anybody that asks me how we how are we gauging the cost that are being, we being presented here? How are we gauging that in comparison to what's reasonable? And I'm not sure, if, other than personal experience, you know, that we bring in from our from our professional lives and personal lives and past projects and so on. I don't think we have that gauge. I, I agree with what you're saying, and actually, that's one of the reasons I asked Keith how his numbers on these ESRs that he prepared for us today, how those compare to the estimated engineering services that were rolled into the um, to the warrant articles. And, and he said that in, in these cases, it seemed like we were going to come in less than what the warrant articles um, had included in the, um, you know, in the numbers for the warrant articles. But I'd like to see sort of a summary table of that. So it sounds like we may already have tracking the purchase order cost against the build amount. But I'd also like to know what we 
we budgeted in the warrant articles and make sure that we're staying within that limit as well. Because I, you know, that's really my main concern is that we don't exceed what we had budgeted in the warrant articles for the engineering services. And it, it should all fall in place. And I, I think I remembered looking at Wells 4 and 5 and then looking at the settlement agreement, what the estimated labor budget was there, and their proposal did match pretty close. It was actually a little bit less than what the numbers were in a settlement agreement. But I can't tell you that I've done that same comparison with the work that's going on for Well 7 and 8 and, and Well 2 now. Mm-hmm. So maybe if there's a way we can have um, – just like a summary table of all of the ESRs and what the budgets are, where their bill to date amount is, but then also if some of these ESRs are pursuant to the Warren articles, we should have a, a number that kind of, that came out of the Warren articles to make sure that we're not exceeding that either. Because if we are, then you know that money's going to come out of. MBD's capital reserves or something, and, and I'd like to be—I'd like to follow that and make sure that they're not exceeding what they had estimated based on the numbers they gave us to put into the Warren articles. Does that make sense? I think so. I mean, the only other way we could know if they're being fair in their cost estimates is to go out and get other bids. And you know, I don't know. I, I firmly believe there's going to be a lot of lost money to bring a second consultant in just to get up to speed, yeah, right? I agree. I agree. Just just connecting all the data that Emory and Gary has built over the decades that, that right. is not, not, not to compete it with, right? I mean, I, that's, that's my point, too. And again, I don't think they're taking advantage of, uh, of the situation. I really don't. But I also want to be able to say that we did our homework to prove that they don't. So can we make that an action item maybe to have a summary table of um, of the outstanding ESRs that actually both Underwood and um, Jamie have with us and where where the bill to date, you know, the bill to amount compares to those, those ESR budgets. And then maybe just look through all the ESRs and, and kind of categorize which one of them, which one of the ESRs are – um, applicable to the engineering amount that was included in our warrant articles for PFAS treatment last year. There's, there's probably some ESRs they're doing here that are not part of those warrant articles, you know, like the corrosion control um, evaluation, that type of thing. That wasn't part of the warrant articles, but I, I'd like to track also just to make sure we're on track with what the customers approved and to know we're not, you know, running over on those. So I don't know if there's some kind of a table that maybe we can prepare. It, even if we have Underwood prepare it, I don't, I don't know who it makes sense to prepare it. But I think something like that might help us kind of track where we're, where we are at with so, all of these ESRs. So the actual projects, you know, the uh, four or five, um, the uh, the booster station. And um, well, seven eight treatment plant, they'll actually have a uh, that comes along with a pay rec. A um, I'm going to call it the wrong thing off the top of my head. It's a it's a document. It has all everything like tabbed out of the actual costs, and then they actually it the you know they'll you know it'll cover. Uh, so there'll be a uh, a budget total at the bottom with contingency and it, it all gets subtracted out as each um, pay rec gets paid. It will be subtracted out and it actually shows you where everything um, went. So it's all budgeted for and yeah. then to, so what the board usually does is um, you know they approve the budget then Ron's job is to go through the pay recs at each time they submit one you know look at what's being spent um, if it, um, nothing is allowed to run over, if it does run over, then there has to be a change order done, and that's um, and that's brought before the board. I guess my point is there is a budget report that goes with each of those projects, so we can actually start giving you those as well. Yeah, I, I think I think that would be helpful. Okay, I'm glad to hear that you're you're you already have that information that you're looking at that. I think that's one of the questions is to make 
sure we're tracking them and you don't want to end up you're over budget when it's when it's too late obviously you want to know it's coming at you um yeah and so my, I guess point right. is, my point is a little bit i don't want to be in the in the situation where where we're finding that all these ESRs are always exploded to the last dollar because then they're not really um you know time and material anymore like they're being quoted and they're pretty much fixed price at that point and then we probably need to be a little bit more careful right so there's, there's two things going on so the projects that like the wells four and five and, and seven and eight those are bid so there are right set set uh, project costs and all of that and we we also track like i was saying before on the on a normal like uh like jamie's proposal here for the salt reduction we would have a po that was done up with that and each invoice that comes in we cross it to the po and to the uh it's not the he they don't call them esrs but engineering contract engineering contract and then we make sure it's you know, each task is is a, is accounted for and it's not gone over yeah uh, my input was more on the esr side so, uh, you know the projects i think we did some review at one point a couple of weeks ago right and so yep. but uh, i i concur with, 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 with ron it would be nice to have it all in one sheet right so we <coughs> get a good overview pretty quickly but the esr specifically personally i don't see Aside from reviewing the invoices that we get for, for the uh, AP approval, I don't see, uh, at least personally, I don't see, uh, I don't have a good visibility of, of how far they're being depleted. Um, and since the time of material billable by the hour, I personally feel they should hardly ever be depleted, right? There should always be a leftover that isn't being used. Um, so, I mean, these are not to exceed time of material orders, right? So if they're always on the edge and always uh, Milk, but exploit it to the last dollar, dollar, then I would start to probably be a little bit more cautious about approving them and ask a little bit more questions. I do need to say, though, um, a lot of the ESRs, um, they'll bill to the last dollar, but their time, the investment of time that they put in there is typically that they don't bill for if they go over. Mm-hmm. And that's been quite a few projects where, um, you know, I've talked to Keith and he said, we, we just got to put in some more time on this or whatever, but they don't bill mm-hmm. us for it because it's not budgeted for in their ESR. Yeah. And again, you know, like, like the 15,000 uh, for the preparation and the meetings that we're holding right now with, um, with, with our friends over on the new website highway, I think, you know, that's, that's a reasonable number. They have a whole bunch of people working on that and, there's certainly multiple days of labor involved, so fifteen thousand dollars, I think, appropriate. But some of the other numbers that are that are out there, I'm not sure how much of an understanding we have of the effort that is coming with this work. Um, Don maybe has a little bit more. Ron has a little bit more. I'm not sure if I always have it, to be honest. Um, and I don't want to speak for Ken, um, but um, I just want to make sure we have a gauge. So what do we want to see as, a, as an action item out of this? Do you, do you want to specifically see something tangible that we can have prepared for us? Well, if we already have um, that list that uh, Ron said is already being maintained, maybe we start with that, have a look at that, and see if that already does the trick, right? And then we don't need to add any more work to anybody. And if we want to have something to be done, maybe we can still do that next time. Yeah. So maybe just if you guys can put a summary together of, of what you just explained, Ron, as far as, you know, what the, the, the contract amounts are, what the bill to date, the bill to amounts are, and um, so we can at least follow that. And if we can, you know, split them up into projects, obviously, um, particularly Wells 2 and 3 for one of the Warren articles, Wells 7 and 8 for the other Warren article and you got the booster pump station, you got Wells four and five. If, if there's a way we can, we're just talking about engineering services because each of those projects had some kind of a cost estimate on what the level of engineering cost was going to be. Right. And um, that's kind of, what, at least what I'm trying to do is just 
try to see where those numbers are falling in place, you know, um, how they compare. What was the what was the estimated engineering cost in the Warren articles? What was the budget for the the ESRs or the purchase orders? And where do their bill to dates uh, bill to amounts stand versus those numbers? If there can some way be sort of just a summary sheet of that. Um, it, I think it would be helpful for me to understand looking at all the projects, you know, how far along are we, if it's, if it's 75% complete and only build 50% of the budget, I'll feel good about that. If it's the reverse of that, you know, then I'll be, you know, it's, we'll, I'll be a little bit more questioning about what can we do about this. And maybe you're already doing that, but we don't, we're not seeing it. So that's why I think we have the question, basically what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, we'll put something together. We'll, we'll put okay. it together and we'll get it out to you guys. Okay. All right, great. Okay, any other questions or can we move on to um, to the next item for the Warren articles? Um, the, the one thing before we start on this is um, there was another copy of these Warren articles that we had at the um, public hearing at the Little Theater. And it had sort of a paragraph under each one of them. And yeah. I think those paragraphs are what describes the intent of the Warren article. Yep. Each Warren article. And I, and I think those are probably what we would want to read in public, kind of like I did at the public hearing. Although this time we can actually take turns in reading the ones that we're actually assigned to. So... Um, I, I don't the, know where that we that still, other copy that included the descriptions, but that would be very helpful for us to have. It'll be in your packet. So we can. Yeah, okay. you, you'll definitely get that. Yes. Okay. So, did you have a list about from the last time we talked about this? I think a couple months ago about who had decided they were going to handle which articles and who's going to move and second and all that stuff. I don't have that down here. Um, we could probably just start over then and do it from from scratch again, I guess. Yeah, because I think we, we had... Have it somewhere. I might have it somewhere from the last meeting. If you want to wait over, just keep going. It doesn't really matter. Let's just keep going. I got Somebody had even meeting minutes, actually. Do we have any meeting minutes? Where? Now it's to me. Sure. We have to. So, so while you guys are looking through stuff, Ken just asked a question about the um, annual meeting. So I thought I'd kind of give you all the same update. So um, okay. we are required to push out the public here at uh, the public here, the annual meeting in two week increments. So where the meeting was on the 31st, it bumps it out to the 14th. The schools we hey, hang on, I have a lot of echo. Can everybody else mute, please, and then we try again? Okay. Okay. They're, they're muted, so I can't. Okay. <laughs> yeah, guys, I'm, I'm... Oh, he's muted. <laughs> of course. I can't hear you. <laughs> uh, so, um, the the annual meeting needs to be bumped out in two week increments. So, bumping it out to April fourteenth. Um, the schools will not commit to any activities, so we can't book a school, and we have to, had to at the time, give the meeting date and, and time and place had to be certain. Um, so we couldn't do that because we, we didn't have a meeting place at that time. Um, since then, well, so then we bumped it out to the 28th. The 28th is actually what the town moved the election time to, and election dates to, so we're not going to have any schools then. It has to be on a two on the Tuesday. It has to be in two week increments. So the next one goes out into May. Um, the governor has waived the requirement to have your, our annual meetings done by May first, which was the original requirement. And he just recently removed the requirement for posting an actual place um, that you can we can post that it's to be determined. So, and then the latest thing in from Kerry was that. Um, she thought these requirements were waived, but they're not. The moderator is the one who actually calls the meeting or postpones the meeting. 
So he's got to do, um, you know, some, some legal things uh, up in that as far as he's supposed to be, you know, taking care of doing the posting and all that stuff, which obviously we, we do here. Um, so between Carrie and I, we're working together on that. And also the silliest requirement is, is he can't postpone the meeting until the day before of the actual meeting. So we can put something out there that keep an eye on the website for the postponed date and everything. But at this time, not only do we not know that it's going to be, we know it's not going to be the 14th. We know it now it's not going to be the 28th. We don't know what the date's going to be, but we have to post something every two weeks. So you guys will see those out there. Just don't be alarmed. Um, it's not actually happening until we put like in red, this is the date and it will happen. Any questions? Should we add, yeah, should we add language maybe that explains it because otherwise we're looking like idiots? Oh no, it, it's all worked out. Terry sent me some stuff and um, we've been working on the language itself saying why um, that, you know, we're showing that this is the date, but um, keep, keep checking the website because um, it will be postponed again. Okay. So we have to wait until the 13th to, um, to postpone the 14th meeting. And then we have to wait till the 27th to postpone the 28th meeting. But I think Carrie said that we can still put a notice out. It's just not official. Is that correct? The problem I have is when um, I think a lot of people are going to want to vote absentee ballot primarily because they won't want to come to a public meeting with a bunch of people around. And I don't know how we can have one in the near future, obviously. That's why we're going to keep pushing it off. But um, I think we owe it to our customers to explain to them that they'll be able to, because right now they don't even know that they can call into MDD and have an absentee ballot mailed to them and that what the deadline is for them to get that absentee ballot back to MBD. Well, I think, I most think right now it's March 31st, but everybody except our customers knows that we're not going to have the meeting on March 31st. Well, yes so and no. Gary was talking about doing a separate posting, but not necessarily have it have to be the official date certain and time certain or whatever it needs to be. Did, did she should she talk to you about any of that? Yeah, we've been working on the language. All right. So when do you think this thing can be posted? In other words, I don't want to wait till March 30th to tell people that the meeting's not going to happen on March 31st, and I don't want to wait till April 13th to tell people it's not going to happen on April 14th. Well, the thing is, what we're working the language that we're working on is that. Um, to keep an eye on the MVD website for the postponement date, the absentee ballots will be available up until um, five o'clock the day of the meeting, whatever date that is. Um, it, in each po we ha we're working on the language still, but um, it's not going to say that the meeting is postponed because we can't legally say that. The moderator has to do it. He has to do it on the 30th. So we're saying keep an eye out for um, postponed meeting dates. Okay, so we're not going to be able to, we're just going to be able to say the absentee ballots will be available until the date of the, whenever the meeting is? The physical meeting, right. And again, we can't say what the date is. <laughs> right, exactly. And I mean, there's nothing we could do about that unless the governor changes um, the state statutes. It's legally binding. I think we can do it because Carrie said we can do it. And I'm, I think we're, it's ridiculous not to tell the customers what that date is going to be. And quite frankly, I don't care if they think it's legal or not. It's ridiculous not to be able to tell our customers what that date is. And when I spoke to Carrie the other day, she said that we can still put a notice out and say that the absentee ballots are going to be available and, um, you know, read at, at the uh, meeting until the actual meeting date. I just, yeah. I thought she said that we could say that, you know, it, it's it, at this point, it's going to be two week increments. So we're looking at April 14th, but we'll, we'll talk to her after this, if she's still going to be um, available after this call. I know we're probably a half hour late or so right now, but um, I just think it's ridiculous to have to keep our customers completely in the dark. That's, that's crazy. But that's just one man's opinion. <clears throat> no, I agree. That's, it would be great to put out, maybe to, to put out a, a, you know, draft 
date or protect the date. When we say we, we're going to keep postponing it. I... We, we can, let's just talk to her about it. We're not going to get anywhere right now. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right, let's do these Warren articles. I did find um, on uh, the, in the meeting minutes from January 27th, page 9, line 36, or actually 33, it says, Board of Commissioners to warn articles to make assignments for presentation at the public hearing on February 24th. Uh, what I don't know is, yeah, we removed Article 2 at that time. And uh, we had a sign, I don't know, I'm going to hold it in my camera and see if you can... Uh, without me. Hang on, this is inverted, so I have to go the other way. Um, can you see that? <laughs> it doesn't work either way. That was awesome. Okay, so well, you you want to? Uh, the first one would be the one that's speaking to it. The um, the second one would be the right. The first one is reading it, so I would be reading Article Three. Yeah, so um, this was for the public hearing. This this one was oh. for the public hearing because the commissioner that would re, um, look at the first one and then, huh? Yeah, I'll shut up. You're right. That's for the public hearing. No, but we can use that if you guys want to speak to those articles. Yeah, since we so excellently executed that plan on the public hearing, we can at least try to do it now. Yeah, any meeting. <laughs> are the articles still the same? They are, right? Yep. Yeah. Did the numbers change though from what's in this minutes to the that's what I'm wondering. <clears throat> well why don't we just reassign them then? Just to make sure that, that we're all same page. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So it must have been uh previously Article Three was probably is now probably Article Four. So Article Three in the minutes, I think, is probably now Article Four, right? Because we had we had seven articles, three, four, five, six, seven in the minutes, and we have articles four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we could probably start. So, the, so article four is the first one that's going to be discussed, and um, that was supposed to be moved by Wolf and seconded by Joe, according to the minutes. Isn't it the other way around? If we scrap, scrap article two, shouldn't it have? We we also added in well, we only had the commissioners in there for that um, that draft for election and the district clerk and moderator positions needed to go in there, so that's why we removed one but added two. Oh, okay. Right. Right. I need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> not not my best trait, by the way. I'm a best skill. <laughs> So, do you guys so, know? I mean, uh, if, if Joe's not here to participate, then we want to keep him included, right? So, we should probably, I think we should just follow what we had in the minutes prior and, and assign him to the new articles now. So, previous Article 3 is now Article 4. Mm -hmm. And, um, like I said, that was supposed to be moved by Wolf and seconded by Joe. And then, who would read the little paragraph that's going to be present? After the Warren article text, I think that, would be, that would be read by Wolf on that one. Yeah. yeah, whoever moves it should read it. Well, there's no moving okay. anymore, guys, because you're at the annual meeting, so you're just doing an explanation of the Warren articles because these are now being voted on. So you're not, you've already moved oh. and seconded to get them to to the annual meeting. No, that's true. It's four zero zero, so we already voted on them. Yeah, so this is just you guys um, doing the explanations. Right. So we just need one name for each Warren article. Yeah, okay. Well, then okay. I'll say who removed them. So you want to do Article 4 then, Wolf? Sure. Is and then, the, um, go ahead. That's the, one for, that's the one for modifying the previously approved Warren articles 2 and 3, right? Yes. Uh, we'll roll it all into one, into one big bucket. Yep. Yes. And again, you'll have that explanation to refer to as well. Right. These, these Warren articles, the current Warren article, as far as I understand, are in the packet, our packet that was sent out for the previous meeting, the correct numbered Warren articles. 
Yeah, they're signed by you guys. They're right before the minutes. Yeah, the section before the minutes. If you have your previous um, yeah. commissioner's packet, it should be in there. Yeah. Okay. Item oh, yeah, and that was the one where Article 4 <clears> also <throat> had a typo. Did, did you have a chance to fix that, Joe? That's the one I showed you out the door after the after the hearing. Yeah, but... Article, article 4, warned article, space, found... Oh, yeah, where it says uh, for the wells 2, 3, 7, and 8 or something. There was a, I know there was a, a space and a comma or something missing in there. So whatever you gave me, I did correct. Can you, can you make that movement again you just did earlier? <laughs> what? Yeah, that one. Swing around. <laughs> I can't see it. Are you testing me? Article four, second line. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if you look, sign should be moving one character over. over yep. If you and towards the number two. Yeah. Look at the one that's in your packet that's signed, and you'll see yeah, that the, those edits have been done. Okay. I think I'll find that one. Okay. <laughs> it's correct. Okay. All right. So article five. That was. Um, that looks like it's mine. So I'll do that one. Okay. Um, article number six, which is the uh, establishing a contingency fund. In the minutes, it had, I think Joe was going to do that one. Okay. So article number six will be Joe. Article number seven is to raise and appropriate uh, 215000 for system development capital reserve and in the minutes it had 10 listed as that one you still good with that yeah yeah okay yeah. all right <laughs> i'll be pressing in front of the mirror <laughs> <laughs> and again there's going to be a little paragraph that we can basically just read from and if anybody asks us questions maybe that's another story but <laughs> um and then the last one article eight um, in the minutes, it was indicated that that was going to be by Wolf. And that one deals with um, raising appropriate the sum of $500,000 to add to the district's equipment and facilities capital reserve. And that, that's to come from surplus fund balance. So if you still want that one, Wolf, or if you don't, I'll take it. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I don't care. Do you have any other ones? I forgot. Did, who's doing five? I'm sorry. Uh, five is me. So you, Wolf's doing four, Don's doing five, Joe's doing six, Ken's doing seven, and I don't mind if you want to do eight or I'll do eight. Doesn't matter to me. Okay, go take a pick. I'll I'll do it if you want. I don't care. Okay, you don't want like to your max. <laughs> That's fine, Don. This. Um. By the way, I, um. At one of the recent meetings, I forgot which one, I met uh, Chris Christensen again, or saw Chris Christensen, and he said that Article 6, in his opinion, is um, illegal. Article he six. says if it's out of the budget, it can't be spent. No, it's absolutely not. We've uh, been round around with DRA on this, and... Um, I know. I mean, that he can have his opinion, but we definitely have uh, legal behind us on that one, and DRA. Yeah, yeah that's, what I, that's what I told him, because I remember yeah. we had this run around yeah. two years ago. So. Yeah, I remember this being a question at, at one of the last meetings. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, but I think it was last year. And if there if there's any ish, see what? Darn it. Oh. Um, if there's any issues too, Michelle is fully prepared to discuss that. She actually has her book with her and she's ready to go for that one. Um, great. That's great to know. Yeah, seriously. Okay. I mean, and if, if and at, at the annual meeting too, if there's anybody that, if you get a question you're not sure of, um, you look down the table either way. If somebody's got an answer for that, they'll, you know, raise a hand and, and you can take that one on to 
if you've got the answer. Okay. Okay. All right, so we square on the Ar Warren articles. Anybody have any other questions or anything on those? No, I'm good. No. All right. So uh, I think we're moving on to the uh, minutes, right? Yep. So February 24th, let's do the public. I, we should probably leave the non-public unless there's no comments. But uh, let's do the public minutes from February 24th. Um, does anybody have any comments, questions, edits, anything to suggest? Uh, just a quick question. With uh, Joe not present, can we approve the minutes without Joe? Don yeah, Wolf can. There's three of you there. Oh, okay. Because you got a chairman presiding up above them. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. if there's no questions, then if someone wants to make a motion to approve them as written. Is this the public hearing or the public session, Don, that you're looking at? I'm looking at the public hearing the right public now. It's just that one page. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, right. Ken Ayers moves to accept the minutes as drafted. Second. Okay, so that's motion made to approve the minutes, the public hearing minutes of February 24th. Motion made by Ken, seconded by Wolf. And we can do a roll call vote now, and that uh, Ken Ayers first. Uh, Approved. Okay. Will Fonchon. Approved. And me, Don Preventure, I approve as well. So that carries 300. So the next uh, minutes are the regular Board of Commissioners meeting minutes from the same date, February 24th. Does anybody have any questions or uh, suggested edits for those? I don't have any myself. So um, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the Board of Commissioners meeting minutes uh, dated February 24th, 2020. Is there a second? Ken Air, second. Motion made by Don Preventure, second by Ken. We can do a roll call. We'll start with um, Wolf on Schoen. Approved. Uh, Ken Ayers. Approved. Myself, Don Preventure, approved as well. So that carries 300. Um, I will ask if we want to um, approve the non public sessions February 24th. Wait a minute. Yeah, the non-public session on February 24th, the minutes. If, if anybody's got any corrections, though, we probably should push this off until the non-public session. But I think we can probably approve if no one's got any comments. I just don't want non-public information discussed in public meeting. But if everybody's good with, with no edits, then I think we can approve them. Is that right? Yep. I don't have any edits. I don't have any, any minutes. <laughs> Were they in the back? Probably in your non-public packet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not good today. I know I went through them, so I'm good. I went through them the other day when they came in. So I'm good. <laughs> Is it 5 o'clock, Ed? Yeah. That's 5 o'clock. Is it okay to open up a adult beverage on this? <laughs> Are we recording this? Yes. <laughs> and only if you have enough for everybody. This will be a fun one to watch. <laughs> you got to have fun in this mess, right? Yep. That's right. All right. I'll, um, I'll go ahead and uh, make a motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of February 24th as presented. Ken Ayers, seconds. Ken. 
got a second by Ken Ayers. So we got the motion made by Don Preventure, second by Ken Ayers. We'll do a roll call vote. Um, start with Wolf on Sean. Approved. Ken Ayers. Approved. And myself, Don Preventure, approved. So the minutes of the non-public session on February 24th carries 300. And um, I think at this point we are at uh, superintendent's report. Uh, just one quick thing. I just had a notification today. Uh, I was notified that um, the governor and council approved our drinking water SRF funding as well as the uh, trust fund. Uh, so we're good to go for well seven and eight and two and three. Great. Awesome. Great. Um, generally, how's the whole um, coronavirus thing going with the staff? Is everybody still working and doing their things? The water's still flowing. Water is still flowing. Uh, staff, uh, staff is. Um, been in and we've you know we've encouraged obviously encouraged if anybody's been sick to you know stay home so we've had we've been short in the office for uh, throughout the week i think we're going to have everybody back tomorrow though right yep and then we're going to make a plan for working from home yep yeah with the yeah yep. it's not a choice right. anymore it's a stay at home and no, well, not essential we're essential the office staff is not essential it's the staff that run the water. We can, we can debate that later, right? <laughs> um, but anyways. <laughs> no, I just want to thank you guys. I know you've probably been going nuts all week all with dealing with all this, so I um, really appreciate everything you're doing. And, you know, you got your regular workload to deal with, and then you got all this stuff on top of it. So I'm, I'm really proud that you guys have been keeping it together and um, everything's moving forward. So I'm happy to, happy to see that. I appreciate that. Thank you. I think we all do. Came close to losing it about an hour ago, a couple hours ago. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Changes every day. All because of Zoom. All right. Uh. <laughs> uh, so next on the agenda, if there's nothing else, then um, ne next on the agenda is questions from the public. Um, not quite sure if anybody was planning on calling in to ask any questions, any, any way that that was going to happen. But... Um, if there's no one calling in right now, then I guess we can say that we are seeing no questions from the public. Um, and if there's any questions from the press, same thing goes with them. Any questions? You don't no. See anybody. <laughs> nope, he gave a two thumbs up and he's all set. <laughs> okay. Uh, then I think we're at the point where we can adjourn the meeting. If someone wants to uh, have any last comments or make a motion to adjourn. Uh, before we do that, I do understand... We are planning on doing a non-public session um, by teleconference with Kerry, and that's uh, just attorney-client um, discussion, so I don't believe it's posted or anything like that, but don't forget that you have an email from Kerry with a call-in number. That's still valid, you guys, as far as I know. I didn't hear otherwise. So, If you can give us a, a couple minutes just so the Merrimack TV has time to break down. Okay, that's a good point. Yep. We'll be good. So what do we have now? Six, six, ten right now. Thanks to me for coming out. Yes, thanks for coming out. Yep, stay safe. He was isolated over the corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, do you guys want to try and uh, get this for what six, six twenty-five or so, or how long do you think you want to need? What do you need? 30? 10, 15 minutes to break right. down. Um, yeah. Ten minutes, he says, that it'll just take him to break down. All right. Let's try and get on a line at 620, and then we'll um, we'll see if we can take it from there. So if you want to make it, anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Make, uh, Ken Ayers, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, motion by Ken, second by Wolf. Roll call. Wolf Von Schoen, you in favor of adjourning? Yes, sir. Ken Ayers? Yes, sir. Myself, Don Preventure, yes. So that's 300. The meeting is adjourned. All right. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank you.